We have got a feast of feature race finals this weekend. We've got the Mandra Middle Distance Challenge and the Winter Sprint on Friday night. And then at Cannington on Saturday, we've got the Trophy Decider for the West Chase. Hello, my name is James Broadhurst and joining me once again is Hayden King. How are you, Hayden? Now, you haven't got lost, mate. You're at Cannington. You're not at Gloucester Park. What's going on? I have to support all three codes, James. You called me the tri-code sensation last week, so I've got to live up to the title. Fair Next enough. week I'll be in my Gallops gear, so <laughs> all right, I'll be in the silks at all. <laughs> oh, well, that is something to look forward to for sure. Even more so, or maybe not quite as more so, but uh, as much as uh, these races we've got on the weekend here, Hayden, we're going to kick off with this Mandra Middle Distance Challenge. But before we look at the final, let's go back and have a look at the heats. We had a couple of tight contests down there, didn't we? Uh, let's kick off with this second heat. From box six, Soda Seville had snared the lead as they hit that first turn, but he was harassed for most of the journey by Major Sacrifice. Major Sacrifice nearly rails underneath in the home straight, but Soda Seville has just enough left in the tank to cling on and score in 37.04. Let's have a look at the field now, and Soda Seville has the pole here. I think that's going to be a big advantage for him. Major Sacrifice draws the Lemon. Pilbrett and Fabian's Gold have inside draws. They were third and fourth respectively in their heat. Speaking of which, Zabel came from a long way back to nearly steal the race from Sunset Whistler in their heat clash. So after that win on June 11th, Zabel has now placed in his past three runs. Sunset Whistler is the fastest qualifier, but she won her heat from box one. This time she's from box eight. That doesn't suit her at all. In fact, Sunset Whistler's trainer, Eric Campana, made his thoughts on the box draw pretty clear. This is what he said on Twitter. Gross. So uh, no <laughs> doubts about what no. Eric thinks about the draw here. Okay, Hayden, can Sunset Whistler still be a factor and... What are your thoughts on Zarbel now after your comments last week? You were prepared to forgive uh, the dog's runs the previous weeks. Uh, what did you th make of that heat run last week? Sunset Whistler can win. Needs a bit of luck, but can win. And I'm going to stick up for Zarbel again. Okay. He's just knocking on the door. He's going to win one. He will. He just seems to keep finding that bit of bother and it's ruining his hopes. But this week I could see him camping in behind them and... If he's able to navigate a passage, he'll be very hard to hold out. Hard to go past Soda Seville, though, on the strength of that heat win. He had to be gutsy there. He dug in hard and he held off major sacrifice. But at the prices, Tab Touch have a market up at the moment. 850 Zarbel appeals for me. OK. What about major sacrifice? Thought that run was pretty handy. Really stuck with Soda Seville like glue there. Nearly took it. Yeah. And we know the dog's got strength, has one over the 700. Yeah, well, that came to the fore there on Friday when he was challenging, approaching the home turn. And he's got that early speed, which always is going to put him in the thick of it from the outset. And he has to be a chance in a race like this. I think he's about 420, which I think is a fair assessment. He's another that can win, but Zabel for me at the each way. OK, all right. It's a good race. Looking forward to it. I just think so does Seville getting that box uh, that uh, he wants there from box one. The dog to beat, but certainly some other chances in that race. Let's have a look at the winter sprint. What a brilliant performance it was once again from Ray John Zatara during the heats. This dog just keeps getting it done. Hayden clocked 22.58. There are no problems with that extra distance. He's now won six straight. What do you think here? Is Ray John Zatara the dog to beat? Does he just go to the front and win this, or can one of these other dogs knock him off? Well, the thing in his favour and his greatest asset is that early speed. He can reel off a blinding early sectional and then mid-race he's almost put it to bed already and that's going to hold him in very good stead again this week. But there are a few dogs who can chase pretty hard and they can make up significant ground like Gangnam Manelli last week was able to squirm and squirrel his way through up on the inside to get the win and uh, energetic I didn't think was too bad in the heats as well you've got others drawn wide Angus Road Zeke should be actually suited by that outside box because he does like to use a bit of the track and he pinched that race last week so there are a few with winning claims will they get close enough though well that's the big question can Gangnam Manelli sit close enough 
Well, we'll find out on uh, Friday night, but let's have a look at Gangnam Manelli's run last week. And like you, Hayden, I was really impressed by this effort. Time wasn't the quickest, uh, but uh, here he is in the black and white rug. Midfield early. OK, only a six-dog field, but he does run down Bamsey's boy here, a dog that had won three of his past four starts at free-to-all level. Just love the fearlessness of Gangnam here in the home straight, punching through the gap and hitting the line hard so uh, really looking forward to the winter sprint on Friday night I'm also looking forward to the West Chase on Saturday night Hayden because this is another good race here let's have a look at the field here and it's a beauty I reckon there's uh, chances across the grid but Chris House though coming in after a clean sweep from the heats three from three Stone Cold Augie refund Tux, master blaster what do we make of those Hayden can anyone stop the house slide in this I think they can I think Chris Hulse has got a bundle of hopes he's got Stone Cold Augie who comes up with box number one which makes him so incredibly hard to beat you've got Master Blaster who produced that career best performance was aided by box number eight you'd have to say got that room and was able to show his strength there late coming away and I think Refund Tux might be the best dog of the three he uh, didn't begin that well down on the inside last week but still was able to muster up, find the lead and stride away with quite an effortless victory in the end there. So it's hard to go against him. I think Refund Tucks, providing there is that luck early, he'll be hard to beat. But he has got Hurricane Taylor drawn to his outside who does like to find the fence. And uh, Hinto, hard to go past him. He was being touted as the dog to beat throughout the series. He and Throttle, he's drawn close to the inside in two. Our dream girl, you can't totally dismiss her either. I think Refund Tux had her measure last week, but uh, it'd be good for the connections there. I met one of the connections at Kelleber and Trotz the other oh, day, so okay. best of luck to him yeah. and the team there. There's a lot in the, a lot in the dog yeah, yeah. there, which is good to see that dog having success. Refund Tux, I think, for me, the three wins in a row have all come from box one, so this wide draw, well, there might be some question marks there. Hurricane Taylor, gee, this dog led once again. Are we forgiving the fact that he conceded the lead here or do we think that's a chink in his armour? Uh, I think it's going to be difficult when you come up against dogs like these to be sacrificing the lead in a heat like that and be expected to win the final. We'll need luck, I think. Hinto, a dog I've been on from the get-go, once again, just thought he was in a position to overtake Stone Cold Augie in that heat. Didn't take it. Uh, he hasn't ever run quicker than 29.80. That might be right on his limit. I'm just, just wondering if he's got that to go to the, to the next step. I think there's a big chance in this, but uh, I don't know. That, that was, to me, a, a, a dog on the up probably should have gone past Stone Cold Augie on that occasion. Don't know. Mm. Is that too harsh? I think 29.80 wins this race, so if he can produce that, I think he'll if he win. he can, that's a PB, though. Yeah, exactly. I think he did get in a little bit of trouble there coming off the back straight. Half got on the heels of Stone Cold Augie, which didn't help him, but he certainly had his chance for the bulk of the race to run past, and he didn't. So he can always improve off that heat effort, and if he produces that PB that you just referenced, then he'll be very hard to hold out. Wide open affair, you're going for refund tux. Yeah, in All a right. very even race. Okay. Another race we wanted to look at on Saturday night there, Hayden, is this free-to-all. Only a six-dog field, but this is an absolute beauty. There are some really nice dogs engaged in this one. Only six dogs engaged in this one, but I'm not sure anyone can stop Amplified the way she's going at the moment. But if there is a dog that can do that, it's momentum. We've also got Jimmy's decision in this race. Big win last week. Uh, how do you read this one? Yeah, it is a very interesting race. Amplified is the real deal. That early speed holds it in really good stead, and that's been setting it up for victory in recent times. But I'm not sure it can get across this week. You've got momentum drawn to the inside. There's some pace from Rip and Tomahawk, who's drawn immediately inside of Amplified. So... It'll be interesting to see what happens into that first turn. I think if momentum sits close enough, which I think he will, he'll be very hard to beat. All right, to run down Amplified? Well, I think Rip and Tomahawk will hold out well, Amplified okay. anyway. You don't think Amplified yeah. leads? Yeah. Oh, 
I don't know, the Amplified is absolutely pinging at the moment. I just, anyway, I'm looking forward to that race. It, it is a great one. Well, another dog we've been keeping our eye on, Hayden, is Man Zoo. Where's this dog at at the moment? I think he's a shade below his best, but we know his best is at least competitive with the best dogs in the state. We saw those dazzling runs he put in going back a little while ago now where he was able to run 29.50 odd with relative consistency. So his best is under, indisputably right up there with the top greyhounds in the West and perhaps even Australia. But he did have that stopper injury going back a while ago now and since then he hasn't quite been able to produce that X factor that we know he has under the hood. But I think it would be a delight for Margaret Heppel and Manzu himself to even be at the races. And it's a credit to them for getting him up and being able to produce him coming off that kind of injury. So I think it's hard to detract anything away from him. And going back only a handful of runs ago, he still produced a 29.70-odd run. So it's not like he's a mile below his best and it's difficult to expect him to produce his best given what he's been through. So... He's an honest performer, and he's actually jumping quite well at the moment, so it's hard to say he's not going to be competitive in any kind of race he lines up in, despite those uh, adversities he suffered. All right, there you go. We are chasing tonight, 11 race card. 6.35 is the first. My best bet, Hayden, I haven't won, <laughs> haven't tipped a winner on a Wednesday for a while yet, so hopefully this is the one that turns it around. I'm heading towards race six, a dog jumping out of box seven, Exile Dreamer. This Greyhound has finished second in her past six starts. She's earned over $9,000, hasn't even won a race yet. This is a, this is a maiden. Early speed, crucial to her uh, chances here. She's got it. I think she'll find the top again, even though uh, she's got the wide draw here. Just a question of whether she can hold on here. Two weeks ago, she got run down by Electrified uh, in the, the maiden final. No real disgrace in that. And last week, just got pipped on the line by Ash the Flash. Her overall times, though, are trending quicker. So maybe an indication that she's just getting a touch stronger with each run. Anyway, I think she's a, a decent each-way play here, Exile Dreamer. Carter Axelrod's the, the danger, possibly Quinella that up if you if you like your novelties. But uh, race six, number seven, Exile Dreamer for, for me tonight at Cangton. Hayden, you've got a best bet for Thursday night. Yeah, race five, number four, Mick Flash. Sort of an obvious one, but I don't think the market will be in love with him because he does have that get back run on race style. So he will need that bit of luck, but he's got some real intelligence about him, much like Manzu, who we just talked about him. One thing I've always liked about Manzu is how clever he is. He knows when to go for runs and he knows when to persist and persevere and when to back off. And Mick Flash, I was really impressed by his nous when he scored at Mandra going back a few runs ago now. We talked about him as the Greyhound in Spotlight last week. Could he build on that uh, box manners and how he jumped the week before? He didn't. He botched the start last week and he ran on quite strongly. I think if he sits close enough, he'll be finishing over the top. Race five, number four tomorrow. You're saying it's almost like he's got a driver in the sulky <laughs> behind him there. <laughs> Is that what you mean? Got to represent. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. Thayden, thank you for that. Hey, you're taking over for a couple of weeks after this. Uh, looking forward to seeing you go ahead. There may be a special guest or two we'll see uh, mm. later on. But hopefully we'll see uh, all of you at the track. Remember, free entry every night here at Greyhounds WA. If you can't make it to the track, though, we'll catch you next time on the preview. Yeah.